Hello everyone. Welcome back to Crock Creek Brewery. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight we have another tutorial video and this is based off of a recipe from the 1300s. A very old recipe. However, we are going to be doing our own interpretation of this recipe. This recipe is considered vague by most sources. I'll expound upon that later. But first, let me tell you what we're going to be making. We are going to be making sage wine. I'm sure that is not the first thing that comes to everyone's mind when they think of wine. However, I've been on a kick lately about making garden variety wines. Wines that I can make from the things that I grow in my own gardens the, my own fruits, my own vegetables, and even my own herbs. And believe it or not, herbs were used in brewing for centuries before us. Let me briefly touch a little bit upon the history of brewing with herbs. Herbs were used in beer making for centuries leading up to the 1600s. They had been using garden variety herbs and other wild foraged plants for hundreds of years. However, in 1652 in Germany, they passed beer brewing laws that prohibited beer makers from making oh, their right product here, with right uh, non certified ingredients. So the government in Germany controlled what was put into their beer. And that shut down a lot of the garden variety beers, ales, groots, and meads, and wines that they made in Germany. That affected across the board all home brewing with garden variety and wild foraged herbs in Germany. At that time, Germany was the major producer of most beer in the world. And so, as of today, it is still uncommon to see people brewing with herbs or wild forest plants. That law has uh, affected us even to today even though we're not still held under the bounds of that law. We can brew with common ingredients today. And so, we have a rise today of craft brewing in the beer and wine industry. There are many people who are brewing with common held ingredients, such as lavender, which you may have seen in my previous video, we have people making more and more meads nowadays. And we have more and more people making beers with other ingredients other than hops, such as ale hoof and sage. And so it is one of those ingredients that I want to introduce today. This recipe in particular that we've gained this inspiration from was found in the early 1400s, the early 14th century, excuse me, early 1300s. It was from a monastery in France. As I'm sure many of you know, the monasteries are where we get most of our brewing recipes and brewing practices we have today. The monks were very familiar with brewing wines and beers in their monasteries. And excuse me if I read my notes real quick. This cookbook is in Latin. This is called the Tractatus de Moda Preparandi. In Latin, it is an ancient cookbook from the 14th century, and you can gain a ton of knowledge 
and inspiration from this cookbook itself. And I would suggest you go look at the online articles to look at many of the recipes. This recipe itself is actually not a brew. This recipe is an infusion from this cookbook. They took sage leaves and already prepared white wine and put the sage leaves in the white wine and infused it for a number of days. That would give your white wine a distinct sage flavor. However, they did not brew with the sage itself. The sage, the sage never entered into the fermentation period of the process. That's where I'm going to differ today. And I have no idea how this is going to turn out. This is a complete experiment. But I wanted to bring you along in the experiment with me. We're going to be brewing with garden variety sage today. I have approximately 11 leaves here today. These were all picked fresh from my garden this afternoon and they have been rinsed off with just water. We also are going to be using four cups of granulated sugar. We're also going to be using Red Star Active Dry Bread Yeast to stick with the theme of farmhouse wine recipes. Of course, we have our hydrometer and graduated cylinder, our turkey baster, and our primary fermentation vessel, our one gallon carboy. Our yeast nutrient we're going to use is, of course, raisins. So let's get on with the process. We're going to go ahead and add our sage leaves to our primary fermentation vessel. But what we're going to do is crush these in our palms before we add them. That's going to bruise the leaves and help extract some of the flavor. So just do a little rub and add them in. And it smells wonderful. I love the smell of sage. I've heard several people who have tried to make a sage wine say that it is best used as a cooking wine. I'm not sure about that because I have not yet made it. We'll see if it's a good wine for cooking or a good wine for drinking here in a few weeks. Let me grab my funnel and I'll be right back. We're going to go ahead and add our sugar, four cups worth. I just love how the kitchen smells right now. Oh, smells of sage. Far away again. Yeah, I think I go there. Oh, Try not to make a mess everywhere when you add your sugar. I oftentimes have problems with that.
All right, so now we have added our five cups of sugar on top of our sage leaves. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and fill this up to right below the one gallon marker with water. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're gonna take our power drill with our stir stick and we are going to mix that thoroughly until all the sugar is dissolved. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit for a few minutes and see if any particulates fall to the bottom. If we see any sugar gathering on the bottom of our carboy, we're gonna go ahead and stir that again and uh, make sure that all of the sugar is dissolved. Okay, so our sage, water, and sugar are now totally incorporated. What we are going to do now is add our 25 raisins. This will serve as a yeast nutrient to go ahead and get our yeast started and active and help them along in the process. So bear with me as we add these 25 raisins. We're going to pinch them as we add them to break them apart so that they can release their sugars and their nutrients into the brew.
Okay, so we've gone ahead and added our 25 raisins. What we're going to do now is we are going to stir that together and incorporate the raisins as well as fill up our water to right below the handle of our carboy. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and fill up our water. We'll be right back. Excellent. So there we have had, or there we have, excuse me, a little over one gallon of water in our carboy. And after we go ahead and rack this in probably about two weeks, we will have exactly one gallon in our second fermentation. Right now, what we want to do is take our turkey baster and we're going to check our specific gravity. There we go. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, so we are at exactly 1.100, 1100. So that should be about 13% alcohol when it's all said and done. So we're going to go ahead and add this back into our brew. And we are going to go ahead and fix an airlock on the top. I'll be right back. Here we are with an airlock filled with sanitizer water. Excellent. Okay, we have negative pressure. Our airlock is attached. We're going to let this sit for two weeks before we rack it, or at least before we check it. That should be plenty of time for the sage to imbue its flavor. And that will be plenty of time for us to prevent any infections from the fresh produce itself. So I hope you stay tuned with me as we investigate this new recipe, an ancient recipe at that. 
So I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you for joining me. Y'all take care now. Bye-bye.